All right, good morning, fifth grade. Welcome to Math Lesson 104, getting into the final stretch. Today we are talking about rounding decimal numbers to the nearest whole number. So let's start off with a little bit of review. When we round numbers, we've always looked to the digit to the right of where we are rounding. So for example, if the digit to the right is less than five, we always keep the number as it is. If the digit to the right is five or more, we always round it up to the next highest number. Like if we were gonna round 28 to the nearest 10, this was the digit two in the 10 spot, right? And we always looked and we said 28, that eight makes this guy closer to 30. If it was five or more, we rounded up, right? Or down over here, if we're going to round 23 to the nearest 10, we looked to the digit to the right, saw that he was less than five, and we decided to keep him as he is, right? That was review. We've been doing that for a long time. How about one from just a few days ago? Remember when we were rounding mixed numbers? If a mixed number's fraction is greater than a half, we rounded the whole number up one, like three and six tenths. Well, half a 10 was five, we decided, and six was more than five, so we decided this was more than a half. Or over here, if I had three and three tenths, well, again, half a 10 was five. Compare that to the numerator, and we found out that's less than a half, so we kept that rounded down to three. It works the same way with decimals. If a number's decimal is greater than 0.5, which is the same as a half, round the whole number up one. If the decimal is less than 0.5, less than a half, leave the whole number as it is. Three and six tenths, we could also write in decimal form as 3.6, right? Six tenths still is more than a half, so we would round three and six tenths up to four. Three and three tenths, if I wrote it in decimal form, I'd end up with three decimal three, three and three tenths. That was less than five, less than a half, so we left it rounded down to three. So to put it all together, when you're rounding to the nearest whole number, look at the decimal number to the right. If it's equal to or more than five tenths, otherwise known as a half, round to the next highest whole number. If it's less than five tenths, AKA one half, leave it as it is. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, that's all less than five tenths, less than a half. Five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, that's all equal to or more than five tenths, right? Otherwise known as a half. So if it's equal to or more than five tenths, we're going to round up. If it's less than five tenths, we're going to leave it as it is. So let's jump right into it here and check this out. Round seven and six tenths to the nearest whole number. So nearest whole number is seven. Am I going to leave it at seven or round it up to the next highest number of eight? Well, six tenths is more than a half, more than five tenths. So I'm going to round this up to the whole number eight. Round eight and four tenths to the nearest whole number. Am I going to leave this as eight or round them up to nine? Well, four tenths is less than a half, right? So I'm going to leave him as eight. And it's about that simple. So here they're going to ask us to estimate the product. Hopefully we remember product means we're going to multiply. 18 and 78 hundredths, and 6 and 12 hundredths. 
So let's take a look here. We actually have two numbers in the decimal family, right? But you still only have to look at the first one. Seven tenths. I guarantee you 78 hundredths is more than half because seven tenths is more than half, right? So I'm going to round this guy up. Instead of calling him 18, I'm going to round him up to 19. Six and 12 hundredths, all you have to do is look at the first digit in the tenths place. He is less than five tenths, right? So I'm going to leave him as he is and call him six. Let's go ahead and get ready to multiply now. We have 19 times six is our estimated numbers. Six times nine is 54. I'm going to write down my four and I'm going to carry my five. Six times one is six plus five more makes 11. So our estimated product would be 114. Here we have a rectangle and they're going to ask us, what is the estimated perimeter of the garden in feet? So kind of interesting because they're giving us the measurements right now in yards. So we got a couple different pieces of math to do here. So five and three tenths of a yard. Three tenths is less than five tenths. So I'm going to round him down to five yards, right? But I'm not done yet. How many feet are in a yard? Three, right? So now I have to go and multiply my three yards to figure out my feet. Five times three is going to be 15. And if I have 15 along the top, I'm also going to have 15 feet along the bottom, right? So I have two of my sides. Let's go and take care of this one. Two and seven tenths. Well, seven tenths is more than five tenths. So I'm going to round two up to three. But he's three yards, right? I got to get it converted into feet. So I have three yards and three feet in a yard for a total of nine feet, right? And if I have nine feet on the right side, I also have nine more feet over here on the left side of this rectangle. So now I can go ahead and figure out the perimeter in feet. I have 15 feet plus 15 feet gives us 30, plus nine more feet gives us 39, plus the final nine feet over here giving us 48 estimated feet, right? And perimeter just has to be labeled with regular units, regular feet. Let's go ahead and figure this one out for the estimated area in feet. So remember, area is length times width. The length right now is 15. The width is 9, so 15 times 9. So we have 15 feet for the length, 9 feet for the width, and let's go ahead and multiply. 9 times 5 is 45. Write down my 5. I'm going to carry my 4. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 4 more gives us 13. But I got to label it. This is an area problem. So 135 square feet. Write down your feet. I use two numbers to figure that out. So I got to label it as square feet. Check out this one. Each side of a regular hexagon. And hopefully you know a hexagon means it has six sides is three and 781 thousandths inches. What's a reasonable estimate of his perimeter? So let's take a look. I have seven in the tenths place, so this is going to be estimated four inches for each side. Since it's a regular hexagon, I have four inches there, and I have four estimated inches there. 
and four more estimated inches on that side, four more estimated inches over there, four more estimated inches over here, and finally, four more estimated inches there. Now I could go four plus four plus four plus four plus four plus four. Yes, I could add it six times, but why don't I go six times four, right? So I have 24 inches for the estimated perimeter. Perimeter is just regular units that we have to label with. Check out this guy. Here it is saying the interior dimensions of the box are shown. What's a reasonable estimate of its volume? Remember volume from the other day. I got to go length times width times height, right? So, 3 and 51 hundredths of a foot, 5 tenths is equal to or more than a half, so I'm going to estimate the height to be 4 feet. 89 hundredths, I have an 8 in the tenth spot, that's more than 5, so I can round him up to be 5. And 3 and 41 hundredths, Four is less than five tenths, so I want to leave him as three. I'm going to go length times width times height. But due to the community property of multiplication, it really doesn't matter what order you multiply these numbers together. So I'm going to go four times five. I know that's 20. Times three is going to give me 60, right? I multiplied three numbers. It's a volume problem. So I got 60 cubic feet or 60 feet cubed. Don't forget your little exponent in the corner. And that, my friends, is the end. You're definitely going to want a scratch piece of paper and a pencil for your Socrative quiz today. And good luck. Folks. <laughs>